This is AutoLine Daily, the show for people who really want to know what's going on in the global automotive industry. Very important news in the world of electric cars today. Reuters reports that CATL, the giant Chinese battery maker, is going to come out with battery packs for EVs that cost less than $80 per kilowatt hour. And the cell cost is below $60 per kilowatt hour. The batteries use a lithium iron phosphate chemistry and no cobalt in the cathode. Automakers have said that packs that cost $80 per kilowatt hour puts mid-market EVs at cost parity with traditional ICE powertrains. However, this battery chemistry is slightly less efficient, so the trade-off for lower cost is lower driving range. And here's where the story gets even more interesting. Tesla is working with CATL to develop an EV battery that will last 1 million miles. Elon Musk has already talked about the million-mile battery before, but he never mentioned that it was being developed with CATL. Reuters says that Tesla will launch the battery in China first and will make the announcement later this month at its Battery Day presentation to investors and the public. It will be an NMC battery, or nickel-manganese copper chemistry, with only 20% cobalt, and will start going into Chinese-made Model 3s late this year or early next year. Eventually, improved versions of that battery will make its way to other markets, including the U.S. Reuters also reports that Tesla is going to unveil a new manufacturing process for batteries in massive Terra factories that are 30 times bigger than its Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada. These batteries will also be used for power storage for electric utilities. And Reuters reports that Elon Musk is going to reposition Tesla as a power company that will compete against traditional electric utilities. Tesla stock jumped $36 a share after this story broke yesterday. Ford and FCA were criticized and even ridiculed for dropping most of their passenger sedans in the North American market. But now it looks that this same sort of thing is starting to happen in Europe. Renault is going to announce cost-cutting plans that will see some well-known models get axed. Reuters reports that the automaker is targeting poor selling sedans and minivans so it can focus on CUVs and SUVs. The Espace, the Senec, and Talisman reportedly will be the first ones that get the axe. Renault will announce at the end of this month how it plans to cut 2 billion euros in cost over the next three years. We reported the other day that Renault's alliance partner Nissan would announce similar plans soon, and we may have seen the first casualty of that move. Jose Luis Valls, the head of Nissan North America, announced he's stepping down from that position effective June 15. Nissan has not performed well in the American market, and Valls was not likely to survive the restructuring. He's being replaced by Jeremy Papin, who will oversee the region as vice chairman. And Infinity appointed Payman Cargar to senior vice president and chairman of the company on June 1st. Cargar replaces Mike Colleron, who will be the head of sales and marketing for Nissan in the U.S. Last month, General Motors announced that its facilities in southeast Michigan will be completely powered by solar or wind by 2023. And now it says that its plant in Spring Hill, Tennessee, its largest in North America, will be powered by 100% solar energy by 2022. GM is partnering with the Tennessee Valley Authority to supply up to 100 megawatts of solar energy per year. That plant, by the way, builds the GMC Acadia, the Cadillac XT5 and XT6, as well as assembling several engines. This green initiative is part of GM's goal to have its U.S. operations powered by 100% renewable energy by 2030. The price of GM's new Super Cruise system in the Cadillac Escalade is going to be priced depending on the model. The feature is listed for $2,500, but for the two trim levels above the base model, It also requires the driver assist and technology package, which adds another $3,650 to the price. That package is standard on higher trim levels. Super Cruise will not be offered on the base 
2021 Escalade. Speaking of the Escalade, the EPA put out estimates for the SUV with its 6.2 liter V8 and the numbers are not very good. With rear drive, it's estimated to get 15 miles to the gallon in the city, 20 on the highway and 17 combined. That's actually a one MPG improvement in the city over the outgoing model with the same engine, but it's three miles per gallon worse on the highway and all wheel drive knocks those numbers down by another one mile per gallon which returns the same city number as the old Escalade, but is two miles per gallon thirstier on the highway. With results like these, I think it's pretty clear why the Escalade is going to get a diesel engine. The auto industry is not as bullish on autonomous vehicles as it was just a couple of years ago. And that was before the COVID pandemic. Now, automakers and suppliers are cutting spending on autonomous technology to save cash during the crisis. Reuters reports that GM's self-driving unit, Cruise, is going to lay off about 8% of its workforce, which translates into about 140 jobs. And the chipmaker NVIDIA, which was developing technology for autonomous vehicles, announced it's instead going to focus on driver assistance systems. It's developed a new chip that can support every level of automation. That way, automakers can save on engineering and use some self-driving technology to improve driver assistance systems. It all can be updated through over-the-year updates and NVIDIA expects to see it in production vehicles in 2023. Another sad day for classic car lovers. The Concours d'Elegance of America, held in Plymouth, Michigan, is being postponed until July of next year. But it's not all bad news. Mercedes has a way for you to get your classic car fix. A Mercedes-Benz Museum Guide is hosting episodes on Instagram TV that takes people through some of the dream cars in its collection. Each video is six to nine minutes long and takes you behind doors and under hoods. The best part is you're probably going to see features that you normally would not see if you went through the museum on your own. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Driver assistance systems are supposed to be just that, assisting the driver. But there's sometimes when it feels like it's holding the driver back. The IIHS recently released a set of recommendations for improving these systems. And in an interview with David Harkey, the president of the IIHS, he shares how a feature like lane centering could be improved. You want the system to uh, help and assist you, hence its name, uh, in keeping you out of dangerous situations. So if you start to encroach over an edge line and perhaps start to run off the edge of the roadway, uh, you want that system to correct that situation and put you back in the lane. Or if you start to, to get too close to uh, a lane line encroaching perhaps onto another vehicle in the adjacent lane, you want that system to recenter you. But one of the things that happens with some of these systems is, is they are a little too aggressive and they do not like to share control uh, with you as the driver. And so if you're passing a, a large truck, for example, and you're more comfortable being not in the center of the lane, but away from the truck a little more, sometimes the systems will not allow you to get out of that center of the lane. And it will actually kick you out of the system at times. And so that's one of the things that we think is really important is that the system allows to you to share control for you to be in control as a driver. Remember, these are supposed to be systems that assist you, not take over for you. And so we want it to take over when you're in those dangerous situations. But otherwise, we want you to be able to drive in a way that you feel comfortable. To get all of the IIHS's recommendations for improving advanced driver assistance systems, you can watch that entire interview right now on our YouTube channel. And speaking of the IIHS, if you're interested in how it crash tests vehicles, it's going to hold a live stream on its Facebook and YouTube pages on Monday the 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time to show you how it smashes them all up. And that wraps up today's and, in fact, this week's worth of reports. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back here again on Monday.
Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.